Hi there everybody, my name is Kate and welcome to my channel, Trinergy Awakens Naturally. Um, earlier I made a video that was um, bringing up something that happened um, years ago, a very infamous kind of experience I had. Um, and I started writing down, you know, all the weird stuff that happened in my life in terms of like, I worked with a serial killer, um, that kind of thing, and the next door neighbor happened to be a, you know, a murderer that didn't get actually caught, um, you know, things like that. They kind of really struck me because um, um, th those are fairly significant and totally weird, 33. Um, so I sat down and actually wrote down as many of those little weirdnesses as I possibly could. And um, I have a video that's talking about um, all of those. But what I remembered <laughs> that I wanted to relate right now was when I met the Shaq. Um, Shaquille O'Neal, okay? I'm not a sports enthusiast of any kind. Um, I, of course, know who Shaquille O'Neal is is um and this was early 2000s out in um, los angeles and um i had no association whatsoever with him his job or anything else i was suddenly associated with something he was doing because i was working as an independent contract um paramedic and i would take my little jump bag and go to a site and just be a standby medic that got paid, you know, contractually. Um, I did that for a very brief time. You know, unfortunately, it was only brief because it was great money. But um, I was asked to go over to um, where they were going to be making a commercial, and that Shaquille O'Neal is in this commercial. And so I thought, okay, cool, no problem. You know, and I understand that to a lot of people, um, they would be absolutely crazed over the idea that they'd be that close to him. And there are certainly people that I feel the same way about. It's just I don't happen to share. Um, that enthusiasm for basketball or sports in general, but I had a great appreciation and I was super excited because, you know, I'm dorky. I just moved out to Los Angeles, you know, with my ex-husband's job and, you know, I'm going to get to go and um, see what commercials are about and, you know, there's famous people. That's just kind of neat, you know. Um, never had a huge interest in it, but, you know, it certainly was um, adding to the fun of being a, a contract medic. So um, I was asked to go and do, I think it was an Icy Hot commercial or something, and, you um, they were video, uh, filming it, right? And so I get there, and I'm just supposed to cover that. I have to just be somewhere, you know, in the vicinity that they can go, hey, there's medical staff. And there's a bunch of people, of course, and suddenly, after an hour or so, you know, the court starts getting really busy. There's a lot of activity, and a bunch of tall folks started playing basketball. <laughs> so, you know, I, I peaked, my interest has peaked, and so I, you know, I peep what's going on and just kind of, you know, keep an eye and everything. And when another man walks onto the court, he's huge, right? So what do I assume? My, my ding dong dumb self. <laughs> <laughs> I assume, well, that must be Shaquille O'Neal, you know. Um, here's where it gets raw about how embarrassing it is to meet somebody famous that you don't really know who they are. Um, I went up there. They were on, went on a break, you know, after a few minutes they played, and um, they went on a break. And so while it was, they were taking like a half-hour break and stuff, and so I went over to the one that, you know, came on and everything that, that looked like he was the most important one, right, the central figure, um, and he kind of was. He was the stand-in for Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> But I walk up to him, ignorant as I can be, and I'm like, hey, you know, how are you? And um, he's just chatting with me. He's very nice, this man that's not Shaquille O'Neal. Um, and I said, I was just wondering, I've got a friend that's a huge fan of yours, you know, um, and I, I don't even have paper. How embarrassing. I didn't even have paper. I had nothing. I had a pen because, you know, <laughs> medics always have a pen, but I had no paper. And so I had gone over and gotten a four by four bandage out of my jump bag and came back, scrounged a pen from somebody and came over and I was like, you know, just chatting with him. I said, oh, this is really nice, you know, and I introduced myself. I said, I was just wondering if I might have um, your autograph, because I have a friend that would just really, really, really enjoy this. He's a huge fan. And the guy looks at me, and the, by this time, a couple other of the players came zinging in, and um, they're all looking around like, is she serious? It, they looked literally like they didn't know <laughs> what kind of a dumbass joke I was telling. And then it only took a couple of seconds for them to figure out that the dumbass joke is not telling a joke. She's being a joke. <laughs> that that's not Shaquille. And the guy was so nice. I mean, he really, they were very, very kind. 434. The, the guy said, um, I'm the stand-in. I'm just warming up the team. Um, the Shaq won't be here for a few more minutes. And then I, I still, you know, I was young and goofy. Early 2000s, <laughs> younger and goofier. You know, now older and goofy, but just even goofier then. And <clears throat> so I said, well, how will I know? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's not me. <laughs> That'll be your first clue is it's not me. You know? <laughs> By this time, he's having a good time. And I was too, kind of. I mean, I was like, yeah, it's, you know, I, I don't know who these people are. But I'm just super dedicated to getting this autograph because my friend would really appreciate that. And so I go back, you know, and he said, trust me, you'll know. So go slink off next to the craft table and <laughs> just wait for the shack to arrive. I know what he meant because I knew when the shack arrived. Um, this giant car rolls in, Escalade, I don't know, think really expensive and like monster size that drives in. Next pulls up courtside. I don't know how that happened. I mean, I'm not into that stuff, so I'm busy like... <laughs> Just being amazed and amused at this point that, wow, cool, you know, if this isn't Shaquille, wait till he does come. Um, but I'm getting an autograph from somebody that says they're Shaquille O'Neal one way or another, 555. So I can go um, and wait for the whole rollout. And, dude, I didn't even realize that when Shaquille O'Neal got out of that car and walked over to the court, he was still even taller than the dudes that I had been asking already. So, I mean, I, I felt really quite the ignorant then that, oh, I see now why they're laughing and chuckling and wondering what kind of a moron asks if I'm Shaquille O'Neal and can you have my autograph? You, you want the stand-ins autograph? Oh, okay. So anyway, they, they play. I'm mesmerized. We don't have cell phones back then, not the fun ones that I could be taking video or anything cool like that, darn it. But um, they're playing. They do their thing. They shoot some, some of the commercial and they're going to go on a, a half an hour break again. And so me and my little 4 by 4 I'm determined, you know. <laughs> my friend's husband got to get his, his things because he's just into it, right? Super huge fan and so I go trucking up there and I, I, I do the same spiel you know and the other players are kind of like, like okay <laughs> she's coming back <laughs> she's lurking and she's circling you know time number two so I go in and I want you to know that I don't know a thing about him I don't know what he does and I don't know a thing about him other than the interaction that I had with this enormously tall man with enormously huge hands. I mean, everything about him is, is gigantic, correct? Well, I got walked up to him and I said, you know, may I, I've got a friend, he's a very huge fan, you know, and um, et cetera, et cetera. I said, is there any possibility? I said, I'm so sorry, this is really tacky. You know, it's not something that, you know, I would generally do on my job, but I just know that my friend would really appreciate this. Um, he's really into it. And he was so gracious. He was absolutely so gracious, and he said, yeah, sure, absolutely. Takes that little pen that I've scrounged around and finally found. To, to ask me what the guy's name is, I think, I don't know, 4x4 four four sign, whatever, get it back. And I'm going to slump away because I'm, I'm super feeling the good Lord, you know, what you'll do um, for your friends. Uh, but, okay, I'm starting to kind of slink away, and he says, hey, I've got a question for you. Um, <laughs> Yes. Um, he said he apparently had just had um, a baby. Um, he, he and his wife had just had a baby uh, and maybe just a couple of months old, if that. And he says, um, can you tell me how to do CPR on an infant? <laughs> and I said, well, um, sure. You know, yeah. I said, okay. I said, give me your hand, you know, and he gives me his hand. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so he flops out his hand. And I, because I, I first started to just explain to him, I said, well, the age of that child, you just, it's only a couple of fingers, you know, and be calling 911 before you start, you know, get somebody calling that 911 while you're doing that very, very thing. And I said like this, and, and he, his hands, you know, and he goes like that. And I said, well, let me see your hands and I'll show you. And that's when he flopped those mitts forward and I said, holy shit, you know, no. I said, never mind, retract that, okay? I said, you, I don't know, maybe you want to go like that or something. But I'm holding this man's hand and thinking, oh my goodness, Scott, I hope you appreciate that, that um, signature, that autograph, because that was really bizarre. You know, I felt very strange trying to share the information for how to possibly render first aid and emergency care and CPR to an infant while I'm trying to tell this man about his pinky. I said, you know, um, just maybe have somebody else do it while you call 911. But anyway, that was one of the most <clears throat> 
enriching, enlightening, amusing, humiliating. It was all of it because I really, um, I, I've met some famous people. I mean, I've met people that um, that has some, some clout to their name, you know, just in a variety of different situations, oddly enough, um, but not one that I was thoroughly mistaking for someone else and or that I didn't recognize and then have to go back and kind of schlump in. But um, the man was absolutely priceless. He was very, very, very um, uh, cool, professional, you know, and, and just kind. You know, he was very sweet, but of all the things, you know, um, working with a serial killer is pretty odd, but meeting Shaquille O'Neal, um, that definitely balances out the other side of it because he was very gracious. And the next time I saw that commercial, I had to laugh just as a sidebar that the first time, the only time that I saw that commercial, um, of all the time that I spent there on set that day or uh, whatever they call that out there um, <laughs> at the studio. Um, of all the time that, that was spent that day, very little time was actually eyeballs on Shaquille O'Neal. And um, the guy that I that was the stand-in, he was just the stand-in, and he got paid a lot of money to just go in and warm up, act like he was the, the um, Shaquille O'Neal. He's the same size, similar size. And then and go off, but the people that were there warming up, playing with him or whatever, very little time on, on uh, camera, and Shaquille O'Neal, most of it was just up close and personal, so all that time and everything, and very little out of the end of it, and I'll close this just by saying that, um, that on my way out of that studio that day, or no, there was another day I was at uh, America's Most Wanted, no, <laughs> America's Most Talented, <laughs> I probably would be on America's Most Wanted at some point for at least, I don't know, possibly be an accomplice for all I know. I have no idea at this point. My goodness. Um, but I was at America's um, Most Talented. It was one of their, their very first, you know, um, audition waves. So, I mean, it, there was no one, no one there of importance except for the thousands of people that were there and, you know, outside, you know, in their first, first cut. So um, I was there for that and I was going home and I, it was so weird because because I was walking on a sidewalk in these studios, um, they, they're, it's like a little city within you know the city. And anybody that's been there, you already know that. But for someone who has not, it didn't. I, I didn't. I wasn't familiar. You know, it's my first time here. Um, but I'm kind of getting used to how this studio situation works. And I passed by someone. It was just the two of us. It was like this spooky western. I expected that whistling and you know um, tumbleweeds to go by because it was just odd. There was nobody. I was in fact wondering, am I lost? You know. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I looked up, you know, to kind of see where I was and Madonna walked by with no makeup on, absolutely no makeup. And she just looked like a regular person. Um, as a matter of fact, excuse me, I almost did not recognize who it was. Um, but somebody called or did some, some, something happened that she, it was identified that that was Madonna. So it was quite an interesting thing. I've been very blessed to, to be around some interesting, nominal, notional, some notorious situations. Um, but I thought I'd just relate that, that Shaquille O'Neal, very nice man. Um, in my experience, I didn't have any problem with him whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I'd give him big old giant props for wanting to do CPR for his baby. So anyhow, I hope that every one of you as well, no matter what part of the day you're in, and I hope that you get within your skin and find your divine because you're divine. It's absolutely fine. Even when it's embarrassed, it's absolutely fine every single time. 1313, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again next time. Bye, friends.